Hi everyone, it's John Willis. I'm back with more information about the Grass Valley K-Frame systems. Let me first of all then move into our menu and so you can see what I'm doing. This is the familiar look of the Grass Valley KSP, the soft panel. And at the top right, you can see I have my Grass Valley K-Frame menu. The first things that I would be thinking about as I move into making my first steps into a show would be the obvious ones. By that I mean the transition rates. I'm looking at program preset and you see the auto trans rate, the one we almost never use, is set at one second. Typically that's going to be needed to be around about eight frames or less and you can see that was an easy change. I touched the rate, I touched dot to tell it it's going to be a frame and eight, eight frames. Imagining I'm going to use key one and key two from perhaps my two character generators, six frames actually looks pretty good to me but let me change them anyway because I think I'd like to show you how and I'll make both key one and key two eight frame rates. So I touch the rate, dot, and then the frame number. If I did want to, for instance, make this to be a one and a half second transition, I don't really think so, one dot one two would be a one second and a half transition rate. Let's undo that before we get it uh, saved anywhere. The KSP is very, very useful because it does give me an awful lot of information about the inputs to keyers. So the first thing I think I'd like to do is make sure that my uh, key one and key two actually have the correct character generators on them. And that's done using source operations. Naturally, this can all be done on the control panel far quicker, but I don't have an operating one right now, so I'm gonna show you in the menu. Source operations, program preset, key one, and I want it to be my Chiron one, Chiron two. I know they're in here, there they are. Key one, Chiron one, key two, Chiron two. Well, that's that done. Um, I don't really worry about the backgrounds because I think we're gonna always uh, be able to change those live very, very quickly. Here's the one that's the gotcha inside the keyers. Key three, four, five, and six actually now have black as their source. So if I were to fade up key three, the screen would go black. There's a way around this, and it's a special source. The source that really helps is this one just underneath that one in the fixed sources list called black key. What it does is replaces the key signal with black instead of white. So though it looks like you're going to be putting black to air, you've actually got a, a key which has no source at all on its video part and no source at all on its key part either. So it's totally transparent. Now that I've set this up, I think I'm in a pretty good position. And in fact, what I'd like to do is to remember this uh, for the rest of the show. So I'm going to use an effect memory, an emem. Right now I'm gonna go into the emem and timeline menu. And this looks like the physical layout of master emem on a Cayenne or Carrera. Uh, panel. In fact, it pretty much matches all of the K-frame control panels. I really only want to learn the EMEM for program preset, so I don't mess up the rest of the uh, mixer. And now I'm ready to go. I'm going to learn, and what I'm going to do is learn a page, bank, and register number. In other words, the page is the, the hundreds number, so I'm going to learn this in page zero. I'm going to learn this into bank nine because I like EMEM 99 and I'm going to learn register 99. And instantly I get a number popped up to tell me it's been recorded and I can change that name if I want to. And I might easily do that by moving to the names tab and call it start of day. That name now appears here on my recall area. It also actually appears on the control panel after I've recalled the emem. So that's my emem 99 set up. What it's going to do is set the correct transition rates inside the mix effects banks. Let's see if it works. Always a good test, I think. If I put all of these transitions back to unwanted rates, I'll also get rid of these key inputs because again, we won't test things unless we've seen it change ourselves. This is gonna be pretty easy. I'm going to put anything I like inside the inputs to the keyers, knowing that that's not really going to help me very much. 
but I'll certainly see them change. And then over here in my recall, EMEM recall area, I'm going to recall my EMEM 99 just by touching its number. And you can see instantly the sources all went back to the correct ones I uh, set earlier. And in uh, ME transitions, all of my transitions have reset themselves. I'm going to count that as a win and move forward. The next step I would make would be to save another show. I wouldn't store over the top of the one I have now. I would give it another show because you know the story. If you keep only one show operational, you can bet that something you over recorded was what you wanted. But before I do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about macros because sometimes these can be really useful. On the control panel, you'll find there is a button labeled record macro. I like using the menu because it's always easy to understand. I'm going to record macro one. So I'm going to touch page zero, bank zero, register one. I'm going to push the record button. Now the menu is uh, recording the macro. And I'm going to make a really simple one. I'm just going to cut some keys on. The key on lights have come on on the control panel. The key cut buttons have all gone bright. I'm going to stop recording. And now I'm going to test that macro. I'm switching off all the gears. Let's see what happens when I replay the macro. The replay button is this uh, at triangular play button. Everything came on at once. That's pretty much what you'd expect. Unlike other systems, the K-frame tries to replay every single step of a macro in one hit if it's able to. Well, I don't think that's really what I wanted this time. Let me edit that macro. And you can see the readout is pretty much in English. You can see it's performing a cut on key one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so what I'd like to do is insert a delay between those se sequential actions. There's a delay button. I can choose frames, fields, or seconds. Let's add a um, 10 frame delay in. Uh, that's fine. And I'll put another one in in the moment. Um, what you notice, I hope, is that the delay is colored orange. Uh, there goes the second one. The uh, orange delay, and it's in the wrong place, of course. I'll just move it up a bit. Um, the orange delay uh, marker actually shows up inside the control panel as well. When I replay those macros using the control panel, the macro buttons will turn from yellow to orange while the delay plays. So let me see if that all does work. I shall save that back into macro one. I'll switch all the buttons back off again. And this time when I play back, delay, delay, and then everything at once. So that is how to make and edit a simple macro. Now could be the time to update our show file. So I'm going to save my new show. And like I've said before, I wouldn't usually write over an existing show. I would make a new one. My original show folder was show A. And there's the show that I made when I first showed you the K-frame before. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it show V2. Anything that gives me a, a sequential idea of how I built these shows is a great way to go. And there it goes. So show V2 is now taking a copy of the macro that I built, the EMEM that I built that set the transitions and the sources for the keyers, and then I'm ready to start moving forward and making my show for real.